Every man has his excuses, and the more vile the man becomes, the more touching the story has to be. What is my story now, I wonder? Now don't you want to know more? Hey everyone, I'm Mariana, this is Impression Blend, and I just have to talk to you about the first Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. This has become one of my favorite book series of all time, and I know this is a bold statement, but sometimes you come across books that are just a gift to your soul. It is a gift. And you know that you will keep coming back to them, that they will always hold a special place in your heart, and that you will keep aggressively recommending them to anyone and everyone for years to come. And that's why I'm here today, because there are so many people out there who don't know how much they're missing out, so I'm going to tell you why this series is amazing, and you should read it now. I read the first Law Trilogy for the first time five years ago, back in 2016, and at the time I was looking for something to fill the dark fantasy void left in my heart by the lack of the sixth book in The Song of Ice and Fire. Still waiting on that one. Little did I know back then that I was about to discover one of my favorite authors and a dark fantasy world I would absolutely fall in love with. I just re read the trilogy and I have to tell you I loved it even more the second time around and there's no doubt in my mind that I will be reading it again at some point in the future. I should also mention that since the publication of the last book in the trilogy, Last Argument of Kings, Abercrombie has expanded the world of the First Law with three standalones, a collection of short stories, and a second trilogy that is currently being published with the final book coming out later this year. However, I'm only talking about the original trilogy today, which is a complete story arc on its own. So what is the First Law trilogy about? This is, as you've probably guessed, a fantasy series, and specifically a grimdark fantasy series. If you're not familiar with grimdark as a subgenre, it's exactly what it sounds like. Grimdark fantasy is darker, grittier, features morally great characters. My favorite. And it is likely to be more violent. In the case of the First Law trilogy, it is also very character driven. Think of this trilogy as one big story in three acts, where the first book is mainly an introduction to the characters, the politics, and the world. The second book is the journey of these characters with a lot of pieces falling into place. And the third book is big confrontations and war. This is a story without a traditional hero or a traditional villain. It's a game of politics and power, betrayal and manipulation set in a rich and dangerous world spiced up by strange magic. It plays with quite a few fantasy tropes, such as a mysterious artifact, an ancient wizard, a group of characters going on a quest, an exploration of power, a looming war, and quite a few others, but it never settles on a cliché interpretation of any of these, because Abercrombie puts his own unique and dark spin on everything. But first and foremost, what I love the most about this trilogy are its characters, and their complexity defines these books. So who are these characters? Throughout the First Law trilogy, we follow three main characters and a decent amount of influential secondary characters. The three main point of view characters are Logan Ninefinger, a deadly northern barbarian warrior, Sandan Glockta, a former champion and war hero turned crippled inquisitor and torturer, and Giselle Den Luther, a captain in the king's army and an insufferable asshole. For me, the favorite is easily Glockta. He's a very unusual character to have a point of view from. I don't know how much darker a POV character can get than someone who tortures secrets out of people for a living. He is 
someone who feels older than he really is, supposedly 35 years old at the start of the novel. He used to be a dashing officer and the war hero until he got captured and tortured for a while, which obviously completely changed the course of his life. Every character in the trilogy has a very unique and distinct voice, and Glocktes is full of irony, sarcasm, and pain. He plays the game of politics very well, he knows what to say and when, but his inner dialogue is something else because he is completely over everybody's nonsense. And in case you're wondering, yes, since he is one of the lead POV characters, the novels do feature some brutal interrogation scenes, so be prepared for that. There really wasn't a character in here that I found uninteresting, especially since most of them have really fascinating arcs, and this being character-driven fantasy, we really get to know these characters very well as we're reading. Logan is also a lot of fun and someone I quickly grew to love. He is rough around the edges, he has his own sense of humor, and coming from a different culture, he gets into some amusing fish-out-of-water situations that are just entertaining to read. He also has has a dark side, but I'm not going to spoil that for you. Giselle is one of those characters whose ego can barely fit in the same room with him, even though he has no significant achievements at the start of the trilogy, so you know life is going to teach him some lessons. There is an arrogant ancient wizard, Baez, whose character and intentions are initially unclear, but immediately suspicious, so he's someone interesting to keep an eye on. Literally, this guy is over a thousand years old and he is on to everyone and everything. There is a rebel woman who is feared by many and her thirst for revenge is her driving force. I'm not going to go over every single character, but just know that if morally gray characters, scheming and personal agendas are things you like to read about, you will not be disappointed. I also want to talk about the magic. The magic element of the first law is something I find very interesting. It's dark and Abercrombie uses it rarely but very strategically. The best word I have for it is unsettling. In this world, magic, also referred to as the high art, comes from the other side, which is a mysterious realm of devils and demons. That means it's dangerous, it takes a lot out of those who use it, and they have to use it wisely. To give you an idea of how dark this practice is, there are only two rules to it, the two laws. The first law, the first law, is that it is forbidden to touch the other side directly, so no summoning demons. The second law is it is forbidden to eat the flesh of men. Those are the standards we're working with here. Personally, I found the scenes that have to do with magic kind of horrifying, but also cool and exciting. I don't want to get into the details of any of this because I don't want to ruin the effect of experiencing them, but because Abercrombie doesn't overuse this magic, it is very effective and very memorable. And speaking of the author, let's move on to the writing style. I gave you a very brief taste in the beginning of this video, but here's what you can expect. Joe Aber Abercrombie's writing is vivid and rich, but it's never overly complex or hard to digest. Every character he writes feels like a person, and if you were to open the books at any point in the story, you would know whose POV you're reading right away. You also get a very strong sense of the world's cultures, politics, and geography, and the slower pacing of the first book really gives you the chance to get absorbed in this world building. Because Abercrombie's writing feels so vivid, I always felt like I was a part of whatever it was he was describing. So if it was a political meeting, I 
felt like I was there. If it was something graphic and disturbing, I was very uncomfortable. If the characters were trading stories, I felt like I was there and a part of the group. And most surprisingly, if there was an action scene, I felt like I was in the middle of it. I have spoken about Abercrombie's amazing way of writing action before, but I will say it again. I do not do well when it comes to action scenes and battles. They're just hard for me to visualize. My attention starts slipping, I start focusing on random things, everything starts feeling like a mess, and then I just cannot wait for the action scene to be over. Not with the first law. There is something about the way Abercrombie writes these scenes that keeps me from getting confused and keeps my attention glued to every speck of dirt. I am never bored and most of the time I actually feel like I'm about to get trampled by the enemy. I don't know how he does it. It's some kind of sorcery. Last but not least, I adore the sass and the dark sense of humor in these books. All of this grim dark I have been talking about might make you think that this is some highly depressing stuff and there is some of that. But the First Law trilogy is so entertaining to read. Granted, this is exactly my kind of humor. It's sarcasm and irony. It's being annoyed by how ridiculous people can get. It's occasional gallows humor. It is something that could be considered inappropriate jokes and inner monologue. And I love it all. Finally, some closing thoughts on the books. As I mentioned, I loved all three of them even more on my second read through. But if I had to pick a favorite, that would have to be Before They Are Hanged, which is the second book in the trilogy. The way I see it, it had the best balance of character work and action. The first book, The Blade itself, is the most character-focused one, and it largely serves as setup for the rest of the trilogy. Only towards the end of it can the readers finally get a feel of where it's all going and what they can expect from the rest of the story. The world building and the character building is fascinating though, so I have no complaints. When it comes to the third book, Last Argument of Kings, it's largely focused on action and war, and it almost feels like there is too much action for a while. This seems like a really strange nitpick, but as glorious as all of this action was, I started missing some of those more character-focused moments. Thankfully, we get back to the characters and the politics towards the end, so this mostly balances out and it's a very minor, minor complaint. But with the second book, we still get many character-centered scenes, we make a lot of progress on character arcs and character development, and we still get some fun action along the way. So that's why I would say Before They Are Hanged is my favorite of the three. I'm also going to yet again recommend the audiobooks narrated by Stephen Pacey, who does a fantastic job of bringing this world and these characters to life to the point where you start forgetting that this is just one person narrating. These are easily some of the best audiobooks I have ever listened to. So if you are considering taking that route, you will not regret it. But with that, all I have left to say is I really hope you give this trilogy a try. It is so deliciously dark and twisted that you just know you need some of that in your life. I'm pretty sure Joe Abercrombie has now ruined most fantasy books that I will read in the future because my expectations for the writing style and character development are ridiculous now, so don't say I didn't warn you. But I'm also confident that so many of you would discover something you really enjoy in this trilogy, and I would love to discuss it with you. I'm currently reading one of the standalones, and my plan is to get through every book in the First Law world before the last book of the second trilogy comes out later this year. If you already are an Abercrombie fan, let me know where you are with that. Have you read 
read all of his published books within the first law world? And how excited are you for the wisdom of crowds? Also, what are your favorite books in this dark fantasy world? And who is your favorite character? But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. A special thank you to all of my patrons for supporting me on Patreon with an extra special thank you to the patrons whose names are on the screen right now. And of course, thank you to every single one of you who made it to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, turn down notifications so you don't miss future videos, follow me on social media if you would like. All of the links are going to be in the info box below as they always are and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!